We all spend an insane amount of time looking and designing websites, so it's normal that we want to design something that is a little bit more unique. But when is the right time to use a unique layout and should we even use one at all? Now, most sites that you see are gonna have a standard layout. Either your hero header is gonna have the image in the background or on the right side with big bold text on the left. And that is for a reason. A lot of these web design layouts that are commonly used are used because they are number one, very good at converting your customer to a paying customer. And number two, it helps Google read and understand your site. So all of these things combine into good user experience for the user that comes into your site for the very first time. You wanna be able to tell them that, look, this is what we do, this is what you should care, and here is the buy button if you wanna buy. And that is mainly what people and clients really care about. But a lot of times clients might want something that is a little bit more out of the box, less standard, less cookie cutter is a phrase that they might use a lot. And this comes at some misconceptions. Number one, by cookie cutter, they might mean yes, the layout, but they also might mean the styling. So very boring styling, this might come into contact with typography, with color schemes they're using, maybe the imagery is a little bit too unsplash for their taste. And so that might come into the questioning of, are you really using the best assets for your client? Now that might just mean that they don't want the typical layouts on text on the left, image on the right or on the bottom or whatever the case may be. So then it is a little bit more of uh, investigation into looking at if your client should have a unique layout. Now in most cases, especially if you're a SaaS, if you're a local business, you do want that cookie cutter website, meaning the typical converting layouts. But sometimes your client might want to be the business that stands out from the crowd in their niche. And that is a great use case for having these type of unique layouts and animations. Having your own unique persona online is a great way to express your brand identity. Instead of having the typical layouts that people might already know, it might get a little bit lost in the sea of other companies. Now there is a risk of doing this. Being way too unique can also come with consequences. If you're sitting down with a client and you guys are designing a really cool unique layout and you launch it and sales don't necessarily convert the way that you imagine it would be, your layout might have something to do with that. Creating a brand new layout is something that we all love to do, but sometimes not trying and testing something might result in a site that has bad UX. Now, although the intention was to do something more unique and set your client apart in the market from their competition, this might fire back at them because the design that they created isn't necessarily the best for UX. The average person judges a site in less than a second. So if their first initial thought is what even is in front of me, then they're gonna jump right out of there and they're not gonna wanna know about your company. But if they see and they recognize the patterns that they're used to and they can read the information and see the imagery and then they can flow to the next part and then the next one and then they can buy, then that makes more sense in terms of a design layout. So you wanna be able to test your unique layouts before you even launch to the market. Now there is a balance in when you should and shouldn't use these type of unique layouts. Now recently I had a client in my agency that was a local type of business, but they wanted something very, very unique with a lot of animations and interactions interactions, the type that you'll see on the awards site. Now, being an awards judge, I see these kind of things all the time, so I know when you should and shouldn't use this type of animation interaction. Now, seeing that they wanted their site to be able to just inform people about their products and maybe even purchase something, it wasn't necessarily the best case to create this type of interaction or animation. Granted, we could do it for them, but it doesn't really make sense for us as a designer to tell them that they need that type of site. Now, the best case here is to balance their uniqueness as a brand and wanting to create all these new digital experiences for their customers and having the typical sections that you might see on every day sites. So that might result in having a typical layout with image on the right, text on the left, but you have cool animation on the image maybe, or you have a cool demonstration of the product or something in between where you're kind of blending the two types of content. Now, at the end of the day, this is all going to come down to two very important things. Number one is going to be the type of client that you have and why they even want to use their site in the first place. And number two is going to be the audience that is going to be reading the site. So if you have a client that wants a crazy site and their product doesn't really match it, it makes sense to kind of strive them away from that. But if they do want it and if it's the kind of product that really fits it, then absolutely go for it. But just keep in mind the cons and the pros when you're doing something like this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. Leave a like, leave a comment, do all those things. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.